The Clone Wars continue ever onward, and our journey now takes us into the heart of Season 5. Come with me as I continue to watch through the Clone Wars for the first time. Well, hello there! My name's Jeremy, and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, and the TV shows, and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's Season 5, and now it's time for the feared 4-episode droid arc. Now, I've never been a fan of the droid episodes so far here in Clone Wars, but perhaps this will fare better? Let's jump on in. We start up with the episode Secret Weapons. And, hey, right off the bat, the Clone Wars title is blue this time. Now, the only other time they've changed that color was a special one for making it red for Darth Maul. I've got to admit, for the droids, that was special enough to change the color? That surprised me off the bat. I'm like, okay, sure. So I guess the setup on this one is that, guess what, there's some encrypted message that we want to go ahead and crack because there's some major attack coming up, and we need to go deep into separatist space to go get this special decoder chip. Dun dun dun. And to do it, well, we're going to use droids, because hey, no one's going to expect droids or care about them. So we've got five droids we're going to use, four astromech droids, plus also the nosebop droid there, number 47, or just named 47, I guess, point being, and... I don't know, somehow 47 didn't turn out annoying to me. It's right like on that spot where it could have turned annoying, but didn't end up that way. So I was actually uh, amused by 47. And then we have Colonel Mieber Gaskin pop up, who's this super tiny little species. So, okay. And I gotta say, at this point, I'm starting to think, okay, this whole thing is starting to look like it's just going to be a big old spoof. Not like it's really taking itself serious at all here. And 47 is just a complete klutz and a goofball. Now, I've got to look this up sometime, but apparently 47 is a whack, not a mech. Not sure what the difference is there. Look it up sometime. Or someone can tell me down in the comments. Definitely let me know. What the heck is the difference between a whack and a mech? Well, then we head over to our good old secret agent facility, and we've got our Q. Anybody who's a Bond fan, you know what I'm talking about. Or even if you just know enough, Q is the guy who gives you all the weapons and the tech and all the cool stuff. So each of the droids are going to get a special upgrade. Well, except for 47. So each of the astromechs anyway. So R2 gets, well, better boosters. QTKT, the pink one over there, gets a remote control magnet. Then U9C4, the orange one, gets a really cool laser cutter. Although, it will blast him back, too. That M5BZ, I'm not sure that it really gets a great thing, because M5BZ, the, the green one, we take its memory banks out, because we're going to make it Colonel Mieber Gaster's Command Center. <laughs> yeah. Mieber Gascon, not whatever I said. <laughs> and hey, they are all different colors, because you'll note that 47 is red. So we got blue R2, then we got pink, orange, green, and red. Well, so onward we go. Now, there's a whole lot of discord in this group already. I mean, 47's acting on his own and screwing things up. R2 then later, well, does the exact same thing. 47 gets to go ahead and screw with our colonel by calling him all kinds of different things, whether it be captain or corporal, and our colonel is very caring about that title of his. And, well, of course... C4 went ahead and screwed up the laser cutter and didn't log himself down. It didn't really matter. It just, I guess, was a joke. Fell over. Onward we roll. Okay. And uh, let's see. We kept moving onward. And then a BZ ends up screwing up and falling for a booby trap. Well, you know we had to go ahead and hurt some more of these droids. After all, you took his memory out. of How is he going to be able to know that much anyway, right? <laughs> well, unsurprisingly, we find out eh, this colonel... He's not got the greatest experience. He's just some kind of map reader. That's all he's ever really done. Yeah, that seems fitting for where we're going with this kind of spoof on our secret agent type dealio. To end it, we have this... It's actually a nice zero-g fight to finish the caper as they go steal the decoder chip. And they all get off of there. Yay! 
So D Squad went ahead and succeeded. Now, my thoughts on it. It was actually surprisingly enjoyable. Uh, I didn't expect to. So it wasn't quite a spoof. I don't think I'd quite go as far as to say that. But it had a lot of elements of spoof. It sure as heck didn't take itself seriously. And while not fully being a spoof, certainly wasn't a serious episode either. And I don't know why. It, it just worked for me. So <laughs> I, I think a bit of the spoof of the spy stuff and whatnot probably helped right there. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is A Sunny Day in the Void. Because, hey, no, this can't all be done. I mean, they got the chip. We can't just take it back and be done. Something's got to happen along the way. And, well, so it does. As 47 said, guess what? I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is, scans are picking up a bunch of comets ahead, as they're in hyperspace. But hey, the good news, Colonel, at least you have an excuse for why your mission is a failure. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. And I gotta say, 47 piloting the ship through the comet storm, it just made me think of Star Tours. That was where my head went during that. I don't know that it was intended that way at all, but yeah, it's where I went and it amused me a little. So anyway, we crash onto the planet Abafar, which seems to be this giant, giant desert, or as it's called in the one area, the Void. Therefore, why our title of the Sunny Day in the Void. Anyway, we go out and spend a long time searching, searching, and, well... R2 ends up kind of taking over the mission, because nobody really listens to the colonel anyway. Although 47 wanted to take over, but no one wants to listen to 47 either. So yeah, R2 gets it, which then leaves 47 and the colonel together. And while well, the two didn't used to get along so well, but they bond a little more by the end. After a lot of arguing and fighting back and forth. Heck, heck like this one. The colonel, all I ask is that you let me die with dignity. 47. Is that possible? Oh, oh, burn. I do not see anything either, R2. He should have jumped. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, anyway, there was an interesting discussion in there, and th this one actually was nice. They got into this discussion about programming versus biology, shall we say, or training, actually. Programming versus training. And really kind of getting to the point that it's not that different right there. 47 kind of won that argument. Well, anyway, that was cool. And then we end up, well, everybody gets back together after they broke up and they meet off in an outpost, which is where we'll be heading to for our next episode. Now, this was a... F <laughs> not as good as the first one, but I still enjoyed this one too. It's a funky, offbeat arc that... I can easily see why this does not work for everyone, but it somehow does for me. This is certainly, this arc is the best droid stuff yet, in my opinion. So the next episode is missing in action, and we're off into that town over there. And certainly recognize that that's a voice of a clone right off the bat. And this apparently is Gregor, who has no memory whatsoever. Good old useful amnesia. Well, there are also Separatist droids on the planet, and, well, our, we're going to go ahead and try to commandeer their ship, so we've got to do this whole thing of getting Gregor the clone on our side, because, after all, the droids are not exactly great fighters. And we get this little bit of a reference to the Battle of Sarish, which apparently was the Republic's most devastating loss, or one of them. And he was a captain of an elite squad. He was a clone commando. And so we find out who he was and eventually get him to come back to our side. And, yeah, he's not going back to the diner who, the owner there, not the greatest guy. Although, amusingly, our clone Gregor says that the owner turned him into a slave, a dishwasher. Of course, that is interesting when you think about all of our discussion we've had in Clone Wars so far, and I assume we'll continue to have, about clones as slaves. So, I guess you're leaving one bit of slavery for a different bit? Although, at least in this case, it's your choice, I suppose. Well, anywho, we find out that the Separatists are mining Redonium to blow up a Jedi cruiser, or at least that's what we're saying right now. Big ol' volatile and dangerous fuel. And the ending of this, Rager gets to do all this great shooting and killing to go ahead and help get our droids over onto the ship. Now, I've gotta say, this really makes me think that's a Republic Commando video game reference. The way we shot it, the style of it, and it was fun. I, I quite enjoyed it, actually. I'd love to see Gregor again. 
just some of what he did and the way it was done with the barrels and everything else and some of the points of view we got. Man, it felt that way, just like only a video game does. So, that was fun, actually, and oddly different. Now, we don't see him at the end. I don't know if we're going to see him pop up again somewhere in the show, or if that's the end of Gregor, or if this is specifically... I've never played Republic Commando, so it might be the actual character from Republic Commando for all I know, or one of the characters in there. If he is, let me know down below, because I, I have no idea if that is the case or not, but I could see it being it. Anyway, yeah, you know, so this was another surprisingly fun episode. And certainly the Republic Commando thing at the end definitely helped elevate the episode right there. And getting a little bit of lore, even if just a tiny piece about the Battle of Sarish was nice. Well, so how do we end the whole arc? Well, they head on up into space in the episode Point of No Return, and I gotta say, right off the bat, I can make a pretty easy assumption that that's probably a captured Jedi cruiser. Oh, and guess what? That's exactly what it is. And they're loading it up with explosive fuel to go make some giant cruising bomb. Yeah, saw that one coming. Well, they end up getting on the ship and find no one there. A whole bunch of holograms of officers on the bridge. And... Battle droids. Yeah. So definitely some enemies, which they go ahead and run from, and we bring up this detonator. What? Reveal? We're gonna blow up the ship? I never saw that coming. <laughs> yeah. The colonel does this line, Mother of Quoth. Quoth. I don't know what Quoth is. Interesting curse right there, but yeah, interesting. Huh. Anyway. So we have some different running in cross droids and having to do some different fighting or avoiding the enemy. They run into a whole bunch of other Republic droids that are apparently trying to escape the ship, but oh, well, none of them have the ability to fly a ship, so mm, they need our people right there. And 47's like, oh, why you need me, you mean? I'm the pilot. <laughs> At which point, one of the running jokes earlier here was 47 complaining about just being a pilot. All throughout, so that that's a joke that we built up multiple episodes over, just kind of a running gag to go get to this punchline right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, we put everything together. Apparently the other droids know where the target is, which is apparently a space station over in the Carita system, where there's a Republic strategy conference going on, because apparently the Jedi Council and officers from around the galaxy will all be there. Oh, no! They're all gonna be in a nice exposed spot that we can kill them all not very bright not very bright but hey it, it's one of those it's a really poor setup for this you just kind of have to ignore it a bit i guess we have this whole fight with a whole ton of buzz droids r2 has this cool perimeter burning fire and then bz sacrifices himself i mean it was an interesting little fight and in the end of that, we get this nice little bonding moment of the droids and good old Colonel Mieber. And that felt earned at this point. I don't think it was done as well as it could have been, but definitely they're bonding and fitting together, uh, considering everything they've gone through in these few episodes. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, uh, another comment. Let's see. As we're going, the battle droids, well, they seem to be horrible, horrible shots. Which, well, I guess they do destroy a Republic droid, one of those other ones we don't care about. But otherwise, it gives me a feeling of R2-D2 and C-3PO just walking through all that blaster fire in A New Hope. Just, yeah, yeah. But in this case, the difference is the droids were actually trying to fire at our people, so th there's a difference there. Well, and then we get to go check in on Anakin and Obi-Wan for a brief bit. They, they get a couple of lines, not a whole lot. Tarkin's over there. Now, when I said I wanted to see Tarkin again, I wanted to see Tarkin a little more than just, hey, look, he's in the background. But... That's better than nothing. And to end the whole thing off, R2 has this climactic fight against the droid boss because he's got to go ahead and blow up the ship early. Dun, 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 dun. Well, he succeeds at the end. The others all escape, and somehow R2 doesn't get destroyed. He's able to be salvaged and rescued. Well, let's be honest here. R2 never should have survived that explosion. But of course, we can't kill R2. We just might have given him a little more plausible explanation of how the heck he got out of dying. But whatever. Well, anyway, I, it was a fun end to a decent arc. Greatest episode? Oh, heck no. I'm not going to say that. So, in the end, yeah, I, I actually enjoyed this arc. 
Now, it certainly isn't the greatest thing in the world. It's it's the weakest arc in season five at this point in time. But in fairness, if I'm enjoying the arc and that's the weakest of the season, considering what I'm expecting for the final two, well, I guess that's not too bad. Okay, I, I, I can accept that. Let the droid episodes not be worse than this in the future, and hey, at least it'll be enjoyable enough. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I want more adventures of D-Squad. There are a lot better things to go ahead and spend my time in here in Clone Wars than watching more about D-Squad. But, at least it was fun enough. And some of the secret agent stuff, really in that first one with the spoof aspect, was fun. I kind of wish there was a little more of that spoof aspect later. I think that would have assuaged some of my issues I had with the final episode is if it was really done more spoof. Because then setting up this meeting that's so important with all these super important people in an exposed, poorly defended location would have worked. Because then you're just spoofing the whole thing and making fun of it. Rather than actually trying to be serious about it. And that, I think, was a mistake. And I think that's probably the biggest problem with the arc, is it didn't know which way it wanted to go, whether it wanted to be serious or not serious. And if they had just picked one of those two options, and I think again go with the spoof anyway not a lot more to say about this when it comes down to it so hey let's move on next week i'm gonna start into what i have been really looking forward to for season five these final two arcs coming up oh i have definitely heard reference to them i don't know what happens in them specifically and i'm happy about that don't spoil me on it (laughs) but i'm definitely looking forward to watching them well what about you Did you enjoy this arc, or did you find it to be unbearable? I'm guessing it's probably one or the other. And hey, for everyone, what's your favorite part of the arc? Even if you found it unbearable, what was your part that actually was good about it? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like and share with anyone you think will too, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet already. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another new episode of Freeform Disney. Have a magical day, and may the Force be with you, always.